going to talk about the history of the periodic table today. And uh, it's important to understand these four scientists. The first one is John Newlands, and he is a guy that worked with elements. And this is way back in the day, before they even had that many elements. Like, there was literally only like 12 or 13. And he um, came up with what was called the law of octaves. And oct means eight. So it's the law of eight. Okay, and he, what he realized was every eight elements, the properties were similar. Okay, so the properties were similar, every eight elements. And that's what John Newlands uh, came up with. This is like the cliff notes of scientist stuff. So I'm going to give you the most important things. Mendeleev is called the father of the periodic table. All right. And he puts in order, he put the elements in order of atomic mass. All right. And so... Um, he, he had more elements to deal with, but he also found there was a bunch of holes in his periodic table where maybe, you know, they had this element here and then they didn't have that mass and they had another element here. So there was like holes that were waiting to fill later for uh, elements that were formed later. So Mendeleev came up with the, uh, the periodic table and he did it by physical properties because atomic mass is a physical property. All right. And if you look, the periodic table today is pretty much in order of atomic mass. There's, there's about four exceptions. So he was one of the first guys to deal with it. He was pretty good, and he was pretty right on about um, the order it should have been in. Then Mosley came along, all right, and he discovered what was called the periodic law. He found out the periodic law. And the periodic law states this. It sounds really hard, but it's not that bad. Periodic repetition of properties... Okay, so the periodic table has a periodic repetition of properties when the elements are arranged by increasing atomic number and mass. So basically all that's stating is the obvious is if you put the elements in order of atomic number and atomic mass, you will have a repetition of their properties. And he noticed that like the alkaline metals all acted the same. The alkaline earth metals all acted the same. The halogens all acted the same, and the noble gases all acted the same. So his periodic law was just pretty much stating the obvious that if, you know, the elements, if they're put in order of atomic number and atomic mass, you have a periodic repetition of their properties. And then Meyer, okay, he's our third M, Mendeleev, Mosley, Meyer, right? And he came up with the modern periodic table. And the modern periodic table is put in order of atomic number. Okay, so Mendeleev was atomic mass, Meyer put in order of atomic number, and that is the way that it is put together today. And so that's based on chemical properties. Okay, and I told you it's about four exceptions on the periodic table where the mass actually goes down, but the atomic number is in the right order. Okay, so if, you know, this is number one, then two, three, four, that's the number of protons. Okay, so it's in order of atomic number. All right? And he also knew that families reacted the same because of the number of valence electrons. So that brings us to valence electrons. How do we know how many valence electrons each family has? All right, it starts off, the first family has one. All right, so I know that's a pretty hard number to fathom, but it's one for the first family. Then the second family has two. This is the number of valence electrons. What is a valence electron? Well, I got a little diagram here to show you. It's the electron in the outermost energy level. Okay, I use the Bohr model so it's easy to see, but you got hydrogen here and it's got one electron in the outer energy level. Lithium, two electrons in its first energy level, one in its second. Sodium, two in its first, eight in its second, one in its third. So you can see the trend that if they all have one valence electron, which is one outer energy level electron in that family as it goes down. The second family, alkaline earth metals, have two valence electrons as you go down. So hopefully you can see that trend that as you go down, they all still have the same number of valence electrons. That brings us to the transition metals. The transition metals, the valence electrons are going to vary, okay? And then we go to boron's family and they have three valence electrons. Carbon's family has four. Nitrogen's family has five. Oxygen's family has six. The halogens have seven. And the noble gases have eight, except for helium has two. All right, so helium has two, the rest of them have eight. So you can see, it's not like you have to memorize high level math, it's in order from one to eight for the valence electrons. All right, so you say, well, why is that important? 
Okay, well, the valence electrons are going to determine what kind of ion you, you make. Because remember, I told you everything on the periodic table is neutral, but it's not stable. The only family on the periodic table that is stable is the noble gases. Okay, and that also shows you the importance, okay, like hydrogen, okay, is a non-metal. And it's over here because it has one valence electron. Right? We talked about where the metals are on the staircase. The metals are to the the non-metals are to the right of the staircase. The metalloids are on the staircase, and the metals are to the left of the staircase. Well, it's more important that hydrogen has one valence electron than it is to be with its non-metal buddies. Right? And then you say, well, why is helium not over there then? Well, helium should be here. Well, it does have two valence electrons, but because it's stable with two valence electrons they have it as a noble gas, all right? And so it's over there, all right? Now, what kind of ions are these going to make, all right? It's important to understand the ions that it's gonna make is what charge is that atom gonna have in order to become stable? So it's gonna form an ion, all right, to, in order to become stable, all right? That's called, it's called its oxidation number, all right? But the, the easiest way to think about it is this. Just think, everything wants to have eight, all right? So we've got our families, and everybody wants eight. So is my first family that has one valence electron, is it easier to gain seven electrons or lose one to become like the noble gas before it? Lose one. Lose one. If you lose one electron, what's your charge? You lose a negative charge, so you are positive. So hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium are all going to form a plus one ion, and they're going to do that every time. Okay? The second family has two valence electrons. Is it easier to gain six or lose two? Lose two. When you lose electrons, you're forming positive ions, right? So what kind of ions is it going to form? A plus two ion. Now, all of the transition metals, I told you the valence electrons vary, but they will all form positive ions because they're metals. All right? So all the transition metals will form positive ions. Now, we go to three. So is it going to form, is it easier to gain five or lose three? Lose three. So boron and aluminum are going to form plus three ions. Now, carbon's family, is it easier to gain four or lose four? It doesn't matter. It's a wash. So carbon can form plus fours, or it can form minus fours. It forms a minus four when it gains four electrons. It forms a plus four when it loses four electrons. And that's why carbon is so versatile, because it can do so many things. Nitrogen's family, is it easier to gain three or lose five? Gain three. So what kind of ion do I form when I gain three electrons? A negative three. So the whole family is going to form negative three ions. Oxygen's family, easier to gain two or lose six? Gain two. If I gain two negative charges, I'm going to form a minus two ion, right? And halogens, gain one or lose seven? Gain one, yeah. So it's going to form a minus one ion. So what is the, uh, what kind of ions are the noble gases going to form? They're not. They don't form ions, right? Because they're already stable. So it's important to understand that the valence electrons, and they call them oxidation numbers. That's the that's the term for the charges. But either way, the charges and the and the valence electrons. It's important to understand they go hand in hand, because the valence electrons are going to determine the charge. Yes. Does helium form, uh, is it still no ion, or would it be... Helium, it doesn't form ions. It's already stable, because it's a noble gas. And that's why I said that's why it's in this family and not right here. Okay. All right? All right. Now, it's also important to understand that groups or families on the periodic table go up and down, and periods go across. And just like I showed you the energy levels here, right, for the electrons... The energy level is the same as the period number. So what is the period number going to be for the first for hydrogen? One. one. And it has one energy level. What about lithium? Two. Two. And it has two energy levels. Sodium? Three. Three. It has three energy levels for the electrons. Four. Potassium, four. And it keeps going down. So you can see the period number 
Okay, and the energy levels go hand in hand. They are the same. Uh, you got it. How long was that?